<clears throat> Let a couple of you guys roll in. Get that field goal. What a half. I mean, that's... Thank God to get that Niner game, you know, scrubbed off my skin. Just that's that was a big big boy football game right there in the Bay Area, man. Twenty to ten. I, I didn't see that coming. I thought the Raiders could win, but I didn't think they would thoroughly dominate the game. I, I think that's one of Latavius Murray's given who they're playing, given the stakes, I, I think that's the best half of his career. I know he had the big run a couple years ago against Kansas City, but he, he's been fantastic. That run on third and one, busting that big run, but just physical at the goal line. The touchdown that was called back. He had another nice. T- he had another nice catch on a swing route where he made a guy miss. Bill Musgrave is absolutely calling a heck of a game. That that was a that was a big boy half. That that, that was pretty special by by Musgrave. Just incredible ebb flow, mix and run pass. Derek looks fantastic. Uh, D- Derek looks as calm and collected. I mean, I've been watching him play since high school as I- I've ever seen him. Just very under control. He plays like this, they can win the division. Uh, he-, he plays like this, they have a legitimate shot. He plays like this, you know, obviously I don't think the Steelers are going to be as bad as they are today, but they're the second best team potentially in, in the AFC. Their offense looks fast. Now, Tlaib's out, but, you know, anytime you have a back, is he going to come back? I, I don't know. But the running game, adding those guys to go with Latavius. Washington, I mean, Jalen Rashard. How many teams in the league have a punt returner like him? Dynamic little punt returner. He's excellent as an inside runner for being a little midget. He, he runs hard between the tackles. Uh, you want to be unmuted? Can't unmute you. But the, the team speed the Raiders have offensively, that, that was a dominant half by the Raiders on offense. Now, Vaughn got him on the one play. Some question marks is where is Khalil? Now, Khalil last year in the second half took over. They need him to show up. They need to get some pass rush. Simeon's looking like he's kind of getting himself together here. Made a couple great throws on the one drive where they hit the blitz, and Simeon hit Demarius down the sideline. Then Simeon uh, hit the touchdown pass to Norwood. On that drive, he just barely missed him right there. I mean, he's wide open. If I'm Gary Kubiak, I'm going in at halftime. I am going after T.J. Carey every fucking play. He can't cover you one-on-one, especially when it's against Emmanuel Sanders. He's not a very good player. Now, he's just not fast enough. I would go at him every stinking play. You have to give him help because he cannot cover one-on-one. He, he can't do it. He cannot cover one-on-one. Luckily, Simeon, and this is a great part about the division, is besides San Diego, you get Alex Smith and then this. So you don't have the two best teams in your division don't have great quarterbacks. You're not playing Brady. You're not playing Big Ben. Hell, you're not even playing Andy Dalton. I mean, you're playing this guy. <laughs> and this guy's very hit or miss. This guy doesn't terrify you. But he can make good throws. So to me, you have to give T.J. Carey help. Clearly, Amerson looks pretty good. I, you cheat Reggie Nelson, someone over there, because T.J. Carey on an island is going to get you beat. He's going to get you beat big time. But the offensive line, I would give my game ball to the offensive line that first half. They were fantastic. Jamey's all a Wale. I said it on Twitter. He might be one of the more underrated players in the league. Just a fantastic fullback. And, you know, in a quote-unquote spread offense, you don't usually use those guys. But they can go throwback, physical at the goal line, run power, run I formations, isolated up the middle. By the way, we're going to do a podcast, go in the lab after this game, and it'll be dropping in the morning. I thought El Presidente of Barstool Sports hit the nail on the head. He took a picture of Mark, Willie Brown, uh, who else was in there? Atkinson, and said the best NFL owner box you know in the league. I don't think there's an NFL owner's box that looks fucking close to that. Half the owners are wearing these stiff suits. Mark's in a in a dry fit pullover. I mean, kudos to Mark, because if I owned a team, I would give zero fucks given to. I would wear dry fits, I would wear jeans, I would not care. I mean, they looked as relaxed, and you won't find that look anywhere else. I mean, to me, the old school Rebel Raiders, that picture alone encapsulates what Raider fans get so fired up to. 
Mark is in a dry fit pullover. I mean, Bob Kraft has his white. I mean, this is this is the West Coast, Northern California. We don't give a shit how we dress. And Mark even takes that to a whole nother level. Like most people, even if they were casual, would go polo tucked in. I could see that. He goes dry fit. And he goes Nikes. <laughs> I love it. I mean, my, he might as well come in basketball shorts. That's what I would do in a basketball shorts. Zero fucks given. Zero. Khalil Mack, is he playing? I don't know. I have not seen him. He's got to be better. And again, this is why fanboys on Twitter, why I have to murder you, that Von Miller is a different level player than him. He's just a, Von Miller's a better player. Khalil's great against the run, but as a pass rusher, he's very hit or miss. You can't bull rush NFL offensive linemen every single play. Some games that bull rush just won't work. You have to have other moves. Last week against Tampa, he was missing in, you know, kind of like an inside crossover move, kind of a little head nod. He had a little outside bend move, kind of like Vaughn does, where he kind of stutter steps you. It seems like this game, you just go in the bull rush every time because it worked last year against Denver. you got to mix it up. And they, they're going to have, to me, to win the game, even though they're up 20-10, they do get the ball at halftime. They're going to have to get some pass rush. They don't need five sacks out of them, but they're going to need a couple sacks. They're going to need some pressures. I, I don't know how many... How many pressures? See, to me, it's not... Khalil is fast off the line. His first, it's not Vaughn's first step is absurd. It's he can bend, and they kind of broke it down on that angle, on the 43-degree angle. He literally can bend with keeping his feet to the ground. One thing that's kind of bothering me with Collinsworth, and I know he's a big part of PFF, he's just rattling off stats. Like, okay, 50% of the time, these guys run 30% of the time. Like, Chris, what are you seeing? Just talk to me. I don't need all the mumbo-jumbo about percentages. Just say, blah, 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 this guy. Just break down what you're seeing. I don't need... It's so analytical now. And I love Chris Collinsworth, but geez Louise. Every other place, you know, 50% of the time, 75% of the time, Khalil Mack gets there 30% of the time. Just tell me what he's doing well and what he's not doing well. Not that hard. I, I, I have not think... Now, again, Collinsworth this week, I, I will give him a pass. Because, again, calling games, a lot of people talk shit about people calling games. Phil Sims gets blasted, and let's call it what it is. It's not very good. It's not easy. Collinsworth has two games this week, so I would imagine he doesn't spend as much quote-unquote film study. You're gay. You're sniped. Block. Sniped. See ya. We don't do racial stuff here, and we don't do homosexuality. You do that, you're gone. You're sniped. You change it to Spanish. But th this would be, you win this game if you're the Raiders. You start to get talked to as an AFC, a legitimate contender. And you're in the driver's seat for the division. I will American stuff. If you say homosexual stuff or racist stuff, you're going. I'm all for making jokes about whatever. You can make fun of me, but you're using, you're gay, you use racist stuff. You're gone. See ya. Come on. Be, be grown-ups here, people. On an immature level. Uh, adjustments for the Raiders. I, I think they need to give T.J. Carey help. Because if I'm Gary Kubiak, I'm throwing at T.J. Carey every play. I'm throwing him every fucking play. The Raiders have dominated the run. Right before we got on here, I had 13 yards for Devontae Booker. I know uh, Bibbs had the one big run. But I, I don't think they have over... How many yards? I don't have the box score in front of me. 35 yards rushing. So if I'm Gary Kubiak... I, I throw the football. I would imagine they're going to get more aggressive throwing the football. Because if the Raiders can't rush the passer, they're going to have more time to throw the ball. The Broncos did come out slow. Props to the Coliseum tonight's rocking. Cousin texts me from sitting at the stands on the 40-yard line, so the place is just nuts. You, you, can't, you can't recreate. Mark didn't raise ticket prices, so you can have a... A guy that can't afford to go to most games can go to these games. The energy, the enthusiasm, candlestick was the same way. It's just not the same at these newer places. Too nice, too rich of a consumer. Let's face it, rich consumers aren't going to stand up the whole time in games. They're going to be the guy telling you, the guy in front of them, to sit down. Raider fans don't give a shit. I mean, the tickets cost 50 bucks. You can get in, you can get in cheap. Wade Phillips going to do for the opening series? I don't know, he's going to blitz. If the Raiders got a touchdown here and you're up 27 to 10, that Jano miss was pretty big. 
Uh, people are hitting me saying, you know, blah, 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 Jano, this is why we talked about getting rid of him. You can't replace kickers. There aren't many good kickers out there. You can cut Janikowski. Who are you going to replace him with? There's just not very good kickers walking around the street. Where are those cheap tickets? I mean, they're all over the stadium. Season tickets cost you like 800 bucks. Stadium does look good. I mean, the place is a shithole, an absolute dump. But once you're in there watching the game, I've always felt this way. You don't really notice it. Same deal with Candlestick. I mean, the press box sucks, whatever. The seats suck. Once the game's going on, it's fine. People don't notice. It's football. This isn't baseball where you have 81 home games. I also think that way in basketball is kind of the same way. If they had to play at Oracle for the next 100 years, people don't notice. You just don't have as many boxes. Your owner doesn't make as much money. The fan doesn't notice. No one cares. I'm not saying you have to upgrade the stadium because they don't make any money on signage. They don't make money. Not They wouldn't with Sheldon Adelson either because he'd be pocketing all the money because he owned the stadium. So it's not like Mark would be that much richer there because he'd dominate the signage, he'd own all the parking, he'd own the naming rights. Mark would be his tenant. It would be his tenant. And that's what Sheldon's like, fuck you, I'm getting about 80% of everything here. So I don't think they would make that much more money. Vegas is a joke. Lee ain't sending Mark to Vegas. I by no means think the Broncos are out of this game. But I, I, give, the, I give the Raiders credit. Played a, played a good half, came ready to play, played a playoff-level football. That, that Raiders team is a playoff lock. That, that first half. That team could make noise in the playoffs. TJ Carey's hurt, just announced. Well, that, that's a problem. Now they're without two corners. So DJ DJ is going to have to cover Emmanuel Sanders, which actually I don't hate because DJ can run with him. I don't know what station Papa's on. What station is he on calling the game? Yeah, you got to keep the pedal on the floor. I think you just keep running it. Keep controlling the clock. I keep running at Vaughn Miller. The other thing I would do, any third down situation, third and five, when you know when they know you're gonna throw the ball, you have to double team Vaughn Miller. Because whether it's Menelik Watson, whether it's uh, Austin Howard, they're not gonna be able to block him one on one. He's the best pass rusher of his generation. His speed move is literally unblockable. That's with a good player. I mean, that's with a Pro Bowl level player. You have to help him. Either chip or double team him. Because if you don't, he's going to get home. Murray and, and Jalen Rashard are eating. M Murray, I, I said it earlier on this deal, best first half of his career. Jalen Rashard was awesome. How did, I don't know, he's a genetic freak. Okay, podcast tomorrow. Hey, we're in the middle cough. I'll tweet it out in the morning. V Sporto. Be up on iTunes too. Second half underway, baby. Adios, fellas.